Hebrews, and we've seen it a couple of times already, that says that by faith, it was by faith, uh, Noah listened to the Lord. It was by faith that he obeyed the Lord. Uh, he didn't know what all this stuff was. He just had to listen to the Lord. And it was by faith he did all these things. But he was a preacher of righteousness. So uh, during you know, this, this time period of him, uh, even before the ark and during the ark, he's, he's, what is he doing? He's preaching uh, righteous living to the people who are not living righteous. Now, that's pretty hard to do, right? You look at the politics world and what's going on these days. Uh, for those who are standing up and in standing in the gap for righteous living, I mean, they're getting hammered and they're getting beat up. They're getting, you know, things thrown at them and things said about them. And it's the same in the church today. When you take a stand for righteousness, uh, man, you're gonna get you're gonna get it all right. <laughs> the world's gonna throw everything they have at you, uh, and that's what I, I I see happening with Noah. And yet he he continued to remain faithful no matter what, because his faith was in Jesus. Well, in chapter eight and nine. Um, we're going to be dealing with uh, some events that are happening in chapters 8 and 9 that happen after the flood. Uh, here in chapter 8, we got two events that we're going to go over tonight. Uh, and the first is God's deliverance of Noah. God's deliverance of Noah in verses 1 to 19. And then we're going to see God's covenant with creation. And that's going to be in verses 20 to 22. Um, so let's let's drop on back to God's deliverance of Noah in verses 1 to 19. Uh, and really there's three main things that stand out here. Uh, the first involves the fact that the waters receded in verses 1 to 5. Look at verse 1. It says, then God remembered Noah. By the way, let's just like pause there. God remembered Noah. I thought this is so cool. By the way, don't think, you know, God was, you know, thinking, uh, Oops, I forgot about Noah. <laughs> That's not the case at all. It's simply here to show you and I that the flood is over and, and that God is now ready to deliver uh, Noah. And, and this is huge since oftentimes, you know, when the floods come in our own lives, uh, when the storm's raging, you know, everything is just falling apart, death is all around, uh, we might think, you know, God is, maybe he's forgotten about me. You know, you're, you're praying and you're like, Lord, do you, do you even remember me? <laughs> I'm right here, you know. And, but it's true. When you go through tough times, you go through those storms, um, you might feel like God's abandoned you or forsaken you. And, and your prayer might, you know, be one of those prayers. Like, I've had those in my past where it's like, Lord, you know, did you, did you forget about me? <laughs> That's the worst feeling in the world, though, to be feeling alone and, and, and away from the Holy Spirit. In ministry, pastors, I mean, that's the most terrifying thought that you can get up and, and, and preach or counsel or do anything for the Lord uh, and, and, and the Lord not be in that. I don't know about you, but to me, that's terrifying. Uh, I'm constantly in prayer. I think that's where my stomach issues come from. They only happen on Wednesdays and Sundays, by the way, <laughs> because I have to teach on those days. But, man, it just, it, 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 that's what goes through my mind, though. I'm terrified to do anything if the Lord's not in it. I want the Lord to be in it. I want Him to be blessed because it's His ministry. It's His church. But I know who I am, and I know I can mess it up. <laughs> so, so I pray, Lord, please get in my way. I don't want to get in your way. You get in my way. You, you do your work. Um, but the truth is, Noah, Noah wasn't a alone, right? And uh, you guys remember it was God who said, come into the ark, right? Um, and it wasn't Noah, you know, go to the ark. It was come in the ark, it, it, as if he was already inside the ark, saying, hey, come in here. And, and so God was with them the entire time, and even in the midst of the flood. So God didn't forget about him. God didn't abandon him. God didn't forsake him. In fact, God has not forsaken us as well. If you are remaining faithful in him, uh, he's with us. It may not feel like it all the time, but our walk is not about feelings. Our walk with him is about faith, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's not by sight. It's not by feelings, uh, but by faith, right? We, we walk with the Lord. And so Hebrews 13, verse 5, it says... 
Let, well, actually, I'll skip to the bottom. I will, Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's a promise that we can hold on to. In fact, in Matthew 28, 20, Jesus says, you know, teaching men to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, here's the promise. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen, church? Uh, and I love that. I, that's, a, that's a verse that runs through my mind because, you know, if you ever get to that point where you're like, Lord, are you with me? Are you here? It, it doesn't say I'm with you, you know, until you make a mistake, until you, you know, do this or that. If you're his, you're his. And I love that about the Lord. Uh, and now, yes, there's verses in, what is it, Jeremiah, Isaiah. You know, if you're in sin, he doesn't even hear the prayers to his ears uh, of those who are living a continual lifestyle of sin. But for those of you who are following the Lord, that you're walking with the Lord, you're abiding in the Lord, um, you know, we fall short, but he still hears us, right? And he's still there for us. Why? Because his word says so. His presence is still there. Why? How do we know? Because we call out to him and we ask for forgiveness. And he hears that prayer. So God knows how long, you know, we should be in the midst of that storm uh, that he's put us in. Remember Noah, by the way, he's in the midst of this literal storm. Uh, for over a year, and and you might think, man, I've been in the midst of this storm for like you know 30 years. <laughs> He's only been for a year. I mean, this has been 30, 40 years, whatever it might be. But when you you look around you and everything just seems crazy, um, just remember, in the midst of the storm, there's the eye, right? That peace, that calm, that rest. Uh, and it's almost like to say that that God's with you no matter what. Uh, and and God's using this storm. To, here's, a, here's a thought, by the way, to prepare you. Uh, and that's what all the storms in our life are for, right? That's what the trials in our lives come for, for. It's not always just for us. It's always for others as well, right? He, he's equipping us. He's maturing us. And that's the for you part. Uh, but there's other things he wants to do in you for others that he allows you to go through these trials for. Uh, man, when I was going through hurt and and uh, the ministry is tough, guys. I don't know if you guys knew that. Um, I remember, you know, being young in ministry. My wife too. Before I even met her, she saw how ministry was. It could get ugly. She bite, by the way, right? They're like, bah! You're like, hey, wow, get me! Right? It's you know, it's not always uh, full of fluff, <laughs> but um, it, it's it's. I had to realize in ministry, you know, it, it's out of my reach when things happen. Um, and I have to just rely on the Lord. I have to trust in the Lord. And, and that's God allowing me to, to, to go through it. That's the idea I have to keep in my mind that God is in control of this, right? And, and He's allowing it. And, and by the way, who am I to command the Lord to get me out of this storm, right? When you're going through a trial and you're like, hey, Lord, get me out of this thing. No, 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 get me through it should be our prayer, right? And, and, but you get me through it. That's the point, right? Allowing the Lord to be with you through it all. To, to remind you that you're not alone. And, and put me back, you know, really put me back in that mindset that you want me to be in. Uh, you know, when I look back at my, my past and I think, man, if, if I prayed and asked the Lord, you know, to just keep me where I am, and, you know, here's my advice to God. Lord, get me out of this storm right now, this trial right now. Um, now looking back, man, I would never wanted to be in that position, that place that I was at. Uh, because later down the line, years later, I found out, you know, this the situation I was in, the people that I was involved with, they were crooked and wicked. Uh, but it, that only came out in years later. And, and uh, so when I look back now, it's like, oh, Lord, don't, don't get me out of this situation. Keep me in it by all means, because I just want to know that you're there. That's all that matters, right? Um, in fact, let's keep going here. Look at verse 1. It says, and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters subsided, the fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were also stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained, and the waters receded continually from the earth, and at the end of the 150 days, 
the waters decreased. And so the earth began to swallow up the water. Um, remember, by the way, the water didn't just come from the rain, which was a brand new thing back then. They were like, whoa, water's falling from the sky. <laughs> what is that? They've never had rain before until now. But the waters also came from within the earth from the deep. It opened up and the waters gushed out. Uh, and now they're, re they're coming back, right? All the water is returning back there. And, and uh, very interesting. Look at verse 4. It says, And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on the mountains. By the way, notice uh, mountains. Oh, there, right now, not mountain. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. So, uh, you know, today there's a lot of people in archaeology, they, they look on, you know, you got the, the, the mountains of Ararat. There's not just one mountain, Mount Ararat. Uh, there's, you know, the whole region of mountains. But somewhere up there on the, I assume, the, the, the tip-top area, uh, the ark rested. And I'm sure, I don't know if we had paddles or anything. You know, it doesn't say here. Right? There's a tip of a mountain. Let's go that way. Um, but somehow, I think God just put them right there, right? Exactly where he needed to be, and, and it, which is very interesting. But remember, from the dates given to us, that Noah was on the ark for a little over a year. And, and then the waters began to recede, and then the tops of the mountains began to show. Um, this is not the end of the ark. They, they, were, they were in it for a little longer. Did you guys keep in mind, you know, they don't just rest. They see the tops of the mountain. They don't just jump out for joy and, and, and you know, they're on land all of a sudden. They're still in the ark at this time. And, by the way, where exactly is the ark? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I've listened to a lot of teachings, and they go on for, like, an hour telling you where they think it is. I don't want to waste your time because it really doesn't matter. Uh, even if we found it or didn't find it, we still trust in the Lord. We know God's word is true, and we put our faith in what God says. And so if God said it, hey, we're going to believe it, right? Um, and, and that's all that matters. So look, in verse 4, it's interesting to me that it says that the ark rested. Did you guys catch that? It rested. And when the ark finished its work in saving Noah, it rested. And it immediately reminded me of Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. When God was finished with his work, what did he do? He rested. And uh, in John chapter 19, verse 30, uh, it says, after Jesus finished his work, he said, what? It is finished, right? To tell us that. In a sense, we could say, uh, you know, God rested at his Father's right hand uh, on, the, on the throne, right? And, and so that rest through the finished work of Christ was given to you and to I as the church. You and I as a church, we inherited this rest uh, that it was God's work. I mean, the work of salvation, is it ours? No. Whose is it? It's Jesus' work, right? And he did uh, a complete work, a perfect work upon the cross, and that work was inherited, if you will, accredited, accounted, accounted yeah, to our account. And, and uh, in fact, Ephesians 2.14, it says, uh, For he himself, Jesus, is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of salvation. But he, Jesus, is our rest. Jesus is our peace. And in fact, just as Jesus Christ saved Noah, he saves us as well, and we're the ones who benefit in that rest. We're the ones who uh, are inheritors, if you will, of that peace. And I think it's really neat. Jesus said in John 14, 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. So no matter what kind of um, storms come our way in our lives, or how deep the floods come, guys, we have peace. Isn't that pretty neat? We have rest, even in the midst of fire, water, whatever it may be, the elements coming our way. How is that? Because our, our rest, our peace, is in the person, Jesus Christ. And it's not in our circumstances, because circumstances are, you know, 
situational, basically. They, they, they come and go, but they're all constantly changing. But our rest never changes because it's a person. It's Christ. And where does Christ dwell? In our hearts. Where do the issues of life come from? Our hearts, right? Springs forth, right? And, it, and that's why we need the Word so much because uh, it, it just there's it's just something about it. As we're abiding in Him, it's it's a uh, it's that nourishment that we need. But He is the life, and, and out of our hearts we need Jesus, and so He's that stability, if you will, um, based on the finished work on the cross, right? What He did for you and I. Um, because he's our foundation, and that's where we grow upon. By the way, the, did you guys catch this? The seventh month of Nisan. Uh, when I was looking at this, immediately I thought of Luke because he sent me a text message this week <laughs> that mentioned this, uh, uh, the month of Nisan. But I, I thought about it. Why does God give us specific dates, right? If you're like me, we could just read right past it and be like, well, uh, well, that was weird. Why did he even mention the seventh month of Nisan, the seventeenth day? Uh, what does that have to do with us today? Um, it's interesting because Jesus, uh, he died on the seventh month of Nisan, uh, on the 14th, and on the 17th, he rose again from the grave. Uh, and so speaking of a new beginning, if you will, is, is that eighth day. And by the way, on that same day, um, on the 17th of Nisan, uh, the Hebrews entered into Egypt, by the way, uh, Exodus 12, uh, 430 years uh, before deliverance. On the same day, Moses led the Israelites through the parting of the Red Sea in uh, Exodus 3. And, and uh, the same day, Israel entered and ate the fir first fruit of the promised land, uh, Joshua chapter 5, verses 10 to 12. And in the same day, the cleansing of the temple by Hezekiah, uh, which was 800 years after entering the Promised Land, 2 Chronicles 29. Uh, on the same day, Queen Esther basically saved her people, right, from being terminated. And on uh, the same day, there was the resurrection of the Messiah. There's, it keeps going and going, but I think it's very interesting, you know, the possibility, the chances of this day uh, coming. Uh, and the significance of it. So it all began here as we're going through and reading about Noah. This is the start of this specific day. Uh, and I just threw it out there, just a, a few of those little dates to you guys, because uh, you guys are like Bereans, right? Go back and you study, and as you study, you're going to be blessed. You're like, wow, that happened on the same day too. And why does it say the seventh month on the 17th day of Nisan? And so uh, it speaks of that resurrection, if you will, the, the, the new beginnings, right? The eighth day is the, the, the start of a new day. And that's uh, Sunday. That's why we meet up together and we worship the Lord together. We, we, we study the Word. It's just a new day. It's the beginning of the week, if you will. And it starts our week off fresh on that Sunday. So very interesting. Um, look at let, let's come to the second thing here is that the patience that is needed the patience that is needed in verse 6 this to 14 um, and, and by the way speaking of patience Noah was very patient uh, we'll see that right now look at verse 6 it says so it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made then he sent out a raven which kept going to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. So ravens, though, they're those scavengers, right? They're the ones that walk on the, on the, on the ground and they, they look for carcasses and dead animals, dead bodies, maybe. And that's probably what's happening here. And so they, he didn't come back. Look at verse 8. It's, he also sends out from himself a dove to see if the waters had receded from the face of the ground. But the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot, and she returned. By the way, it says she. I thought that was interesting, uh, why God would allow that. It says, that she, into the ark to him, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her, again, there it is, and drew her into the ark to himself. And he waited yet another seven days. So there's the patience of Noah. And again he sent the dove out from the ark. Then the dove came to him in the evening, and behold, 
a freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth. Isn't that neat? Uh, kind of like our, our title of our, uh, our fellowship, right? Olive Branch Fellowship. Cool. And Noah knew that the waters had receded from the earth. And so he waited yet another seven days. Wow, another seven days. And sent out the dove, which did not return again to him anymore. So he sent out the dove. Typically lands on trees, not the ground, right? And, and the dove, by the way, is a picture of the Holy Spirit can be as well. If you guys remember Jesus at his baptism in Luke chapter 3, verse 22, uh, it says, And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him, uh, which is very interesting. So you, got, you see a lot of those uh, images of birds coming down. That's kind of a rightful image because the Holy Spirit came uh, upon Right? Uh, in, in the presence of almost a bodily form, kind of just gently, like the doves, they do that, you know, nice thing, you know. Um, very interesting. Uh, and there, there, was, there was growth, by the way. So there was life at this time. There was vegetation at this time when the dove went out. And this is a picture of the dove bringing back, you know, that new life, the, the, the new beginnings that's just going to start happening here. Just like we have a new beginning. If you guys remember, you know, what did we do when we came to the Lord? We confessed our sins to Jesus. We asked him to be Lord and Savior over our lives. And he gives us now what his Holy Spirit, speaking of the Holy Spirit, uh, to come in our lives. Romans 8, 11, Acts 5, 32, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 16. And, and so when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, what does he do? He seals us. Ephesians 1.13, Ephesians 4.30, and now we are recipients, if you will, uh, of this new life, right? This new beginnings that God is doing. We are now, we receive that freely. God offers us that new life. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5.17, he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So if anyone is in Christ, it doesn't matter the race, doesn't matter the ethnicity, it doesn't matter any of that stuff, right? If anyone is in Christ, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So we, we all have a past, but since, you know, it's not about our past, it's not about who we were, and it's not about, you know, it, it's about Jesus. We look forward to Jesus in our lives. Right and and because uh, he forgave he forgave us he forgot about it and our our life continues in him uh, and all that we do and we're a new creation that's the idea I want to put out there to you guys our our mindset's different right it's no longer about me myself and I right it's about Jesus and so uh, he's he's all that should matter in our lives look at verse thirteen it says and it came to pass in the six hundred and first year. In the first month, the first day of the month, that the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and indeed the surface of the ground was dry. What does that say? He didn't even look until this point. He was literally just floating by faith. <laughs> he opened the window, let a bird out, but he didn't look down until we're told now, at this point, he actually looked down to check. Uh, which is interesting. By the way, remember Noah was 600 years old when he got into the ark. And so, look, look at verse 14. And in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dried. So, if you guys remember in verse 5 that we just read, uh, what did we see? We saw that barely you could see the tops of the mountains at that point. So, since that day, he waited an additional 70 days. Isn't that interesting? Uh, and you talk about patience. He already, he's already been in the boat for over a year, and, and now he's starting to see the tips of the mountains, and he's excited. Maybe they come to the top, the, the tip of a mountain, and they're, they're resting there, which it did say in the beginning, right, that the ark rested. Uh, so no more of this swaying stuff, right? Um, and now... He doesn't, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I would have jumped out of there immediately, like, whoa, right, lad, dry lad, oh, I've been waiting for you, right, throwing dirt in the air, and I would have been having a blast, but Noah didn't even bother going out of the ark, 
Until, until, and we'll find out now, uh, until God actually told him to get. Very, very interesting. He waited on the Lord uh, to hear from the Lord, to be directed by the Lord. Uh, I don't know about you, but it, I fail at that area. <laughs> you know, immediately I just jump to conclusions and it's like, woohoo! But we're, we're anxious people these days. In fact, if you think about it, I mean, 30 seconds is too long for popcorn, isn't it? It's like, would you hurry up already? Come on! Oh, I can smell it! Come on! Or, or coffee, if you're like me in the morning, I'm like, let's go, coffee maker! And it's like, and it, it even does a little like, ding, 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 you know, when it's done, and it's still dripping. It's like, oh, you're not done yet? Come on! <laughs> Uh, we're impatient people. We're driving on the freeway, right? It's like, would you get out of the way? Right? It's just the, the days that we live in. But Noah waited until he heard from the Lord. And I think that we need to apply this. Are we waiting on the Lord to direct us? Are we waiting on the Lord to guide us into His will and what He wants done in our lives? Are, are we waiting for that response? And if you're, if you're listening... You may be waiting, but are you listening? Are you, oh, you have an open ear to the Lord? How do you have that open ear? It's by abiding in Him. John chapter 15. Uh, abide in me and I'll abide in you, right? So if you're in the Word of God, that's how you will be able to have an ear to hear. It's to be able to listen to His voice. And when you do, then be quick, right? To hear, wait on the Lord by all means, however long. But once he speaks, you jump on that. You get going uh, and hear whatever the Lord's got for you. Isaiah 40, verse 31, it says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Anybody here need that their strength renewed? They, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Are you weary in your walk with the Lord? You know, and, and they shall walk and not faint. I don't know about you, but I love this verse. <laughs> it's a refreshment to me. We need to be careful not to be, move forward, you know, in our own ways, but just wait on the Lord. I mean, how, how, how many times do we do that? Uh, and there's, there's always going to be consequences, by the way, when you move forward without waiting on the Lord. Uh, and that's a scary thing. Um, let's come to the third thing here. Is the command that is heeded. The command that is heeded in verses 15 to 19. Um, it says in verse 15, Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your, uh, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds and cattle, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. I like that he added to that. He, Noah just didn't take off and just leave the animals there. Uh, he helped them get out of the ark, right? He's obeying the Lord here. So here God says, go out of the ark. If you guys remember in chapter 7, verse 2, uh, or I'm maybe verse 1, God said, go into the ark. Uh, so interesting. Again, showing that he's always there with us, right? Uh, Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he says, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And we talked about, you know, when the Lord said, come into the ark, right? Come to me, uh, and I'll give you rest. We talked about the ark resting. Uh, and, and in Mark 16, 15, it says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So get the picture. First we come to the Lord, and then we get sent out by the Lord. And, and that period, you know, of time between... It's often a time of testing. It's a time of refining, if you will. You know, we sing that song, you know, Refiner's Fire. Um, and it's so true. There's times in our lives where God just wants to refine you. He's going to take you through a, a storm, if you will, a trial, if you will. But He's making you. He's shaping you. He's molding you. He is the potter. We're, we're, we're the clay, right? And, and sometimes if the clay is not working out... Sometimes you just got to throw it on the ground. <laughs> you got to smash it up a bit, you know, pick it back up, put it back together, throw some more water on it, right? And then start forming that thing again. And, and that's like us. Sometimes we got to relearn our lessons over and over. Um, but very interesting. So God allows us to go through these times 
Uh, and it's to prepare us. It's to enable us. It's to equip us. It's to uh, be a blessing to the Lord and, and to minister to others. And how can we minister to others if we ourselves haven't even, you know, been through what they've been through? Uh, I mean, we could be like, hey, you know, I, 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 I'm sorry about what you went through. And we can em emphasize, em empathize, sorry, got the word in my head and I was trying to pronounce it. Um, but if, we, if we'd ever gone through what they've gone through, then, then it's hard to uh, really meet them where they're at. And so I think God allows us to go through certain things in our lives. And I think it's for the sake of others, right? I think that's why the Lord allows us to go through those things, that we can minister to them. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 1.3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. And, and, and re just be reminded, if God is in you, He's enabling you, He's equipping you, He is the God of all comfort. He is able to comfort you in the midst of anything that you're going through. And especially if you're trying to minister to somebody else, because there's tough stuff that goes on all the time uh, in people's lives. And I always pray, Lord, <laughs> I need your Holy Spirit, Lord, and, and big time. Because, you know, anything I can say, can, it, it, if it's of the flesh, I mean, it's nothing. It falls to the deaf ears. It's, it's, it's horrible. But if it's of the Lord... Man, people can, salvation can happen, healing can happen, blessing, you know, in that sense can happen. And it's beautiful. But for those of you who have, you know, given your life to Jesus, um, yet you're still not delivered from something, or, or, or life just hasn't changed, you know, um, or you still have this, you know, terminal cancer, or whatever it may be, right, those, those things in your life, you may be in, the, in that time of testing or equipping in your life that God's working and God's doing, and it's to minister, it's for you to minister to other people, right? When you're going through it, it's like, oh, Lord, why me? Why this? I'm not, my life was so good with you. I've been reading your word. I've been in prayer, and boom, I'm here in the hospital bed, and I'm, I, you know, I don't have feet, or I don't have my arms, or whatever it may be. What is this? What did I do? It's not about you. Calm down. It's God created you for this time, for this purpose, and it's for you to be used by Him for others, right? That God can do a work through you. And so we, we think it's always about me, 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 myself, and I, but we got to consider others, right? Try looking at the things uh, in, in light of others and, and, and not in light of ourselves. Look at verse 18. It says, so Noah went out, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with them, every animal, every creeping thing, every bird, whatever creeps on the earth, according to their families, went out of the ark. So remember Noah's heart at this time? What, 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 what's going on around him? The entire landscape has basically changed. And the whole world was different. Even, you know, seasons were changed. Uh, and now there's cold. Now there's heat. Right? And, and there's winter, there's summertime all of a sudden. So literally the seasons have changed. Uh, everything around him has changed. And in the midst of this change, he, he still is patient. He is still faithful in all of it. And we usually hate change. I don't know about you guys, but uh, my wife, Art, she already knows what I'm going to order. If I walk into a Mexican restaurant... And I act like I'm looking at a menu, like, oh, yeah, look at this. Oh, this is cool. What do you want? A chimichanga? Chicken chimichanga. That's all I want. Yeah. It's, it's always just going to happen no matter what. I don't know why I'm looking at the thing. I'm just looking at the prices, really. But um, but it, it, we, we don't like change, right? Now, um, Noah, he, he was stepping out into the unknown, but he did, he did it by faith. And that's the idea. If God calls you, then go. Right? Go immediately. Uh, and don't worry about questions. Just go. I remember uh, the Lord put out of my heart something. I, and this is a short story, really quick. Really, I don't know what time it is. But um, I was in California. I had a great job. San Diego. I mean, the weather's great. I go to the beach every day, every morning. I mean, it's just me and the beach and the Lord, right? It was beautiful. I, I got my coffee. I got my Bible. And I'm just sitting there. The, you know, the, the sun's coming up. Beautiful, and, and it was just, I, it was, it was amazing. Um, and uh, but my mom called me and said, "Hey, your brother's in the hospital. He's really hurt. 
you need to get down here and come visit him. And I was like, oh, okay. I drive down to San Diego, or uh, Tucson, Arizona, and before I did, I just helped the family, not to boast or anything, but I, I thought I was like, you know, big head, big prideful guy, right? I was like, I'll get it all back. Here, I'll just give them all of it. They're in need, right? Here you go. And, and I get to Tucson, my brother's fine. My mom was over-exaggerating, right? He never even went to the hospital. I was like, oh, great. Well, my car breaks down, and, and I didn't have a credit card, so I couldn't fix it, and I'm like, okay, now I'm stuck here. And then I ended up losing my job because I didn't get back on time. And I was like, all right, Lord, you're doing something here. What is it? Because this is out of my hands. This is out of my reach. This is not something I planned. It's just something like, what's going on? And I remember just being prompted, and I was... It wasn't an anger, it was almost like, a, Lord, I'm not going to do anything until I hear from you, type of thing. And, and I remember walking late at night, it was like 1 in the morning. And this is Indian reservations, and in, in, in that part of the land out that way. We have things called mountains, I don't know if you guys have heard of those things. right? <laughs> so I'm walking in this Indian residue, and it says, no trespassing, you'll be shot, or whatever. And, and I, I go through it, and I'm, I don't care. I just wanted to walk and spend time with the Lord and just wait on Him. And it was one of those dumb things, because I got, literally, there was coyotes right next to me. They're howling, and then I could hear them, and they literally were circling me. But I was looking up, and I'm just, I was so dumb. There's scorpions, you know? And I, I don't know what, I didn't care, though. It's one of those things, like, well, Lord, you're with me, but you're doing something, and I want in on it right now. And, I, and But I was praying, I was like, what do you want? And I'm in tears, of course, I knew it was of the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me and said, um, I, I, in my mind I pictured, okay, do you want me just to go to, in my mind it was the Calvary Chapel uh, founder, his name is Chuck Smith, and I was like, do you want me to just go knock on his door in California, and I'm just going to sleep there, he'll open the door, and I'll just be trained by him, is that what you want me to do? And I'm praying, and all I heard was one word. Marietta. And I was like, well, I don't know what that is, but that's all I needed. I'm going home and I'm going to sleep. And, you know, I go to church the next morning and, uh, and, and after church, uh, the pastor's wife comes up to me and she's like, hey, where have you been? I was like, oh, I've been in San Diego. Oh, okay, we're going to catch up really quick. She's like, well, the Lord put something strongly on our hearts. And, and she's like, what do you think about Marietta? And I was like, wow, what is that? Why, why did you say that? What is Marietta? And, and she's like, calm down, what do you know? This, this is in the lobby area. And I was just going crazy because I was like, the Lord just spoke to me on that word, Marietta. What is it? And she's like, it's a city in California. I was like, of course, back to California. <laughs> and and uh, she's like, but there's a bio college there. But the Lord put it on our hearts to send you there. And, and, uh, and we want to pay for everything. And I... I didn't even look at the website. I didn't care what the dates were. I didn't even know if they were even starting or ending. You know what I did? I got in my car and for some reason it was able to take me there. But I drove all the way to California, Marietta, and, and uh, I didn't even tell her. I, and I was there and they were starting up and you know, and you gotta enroll and all that. But I knew that the Lord had me there. They're like, well, we're sorry, there's no more rooms here. So yeah, you could it's always next semester. And I was like, no, 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 no. God wants me here, and I'm here. And I remember just sitting down outside and just praying. I was like, Lord, you spoke to me, and I'm here. And, and what do you want to do? And some lady came up to me, and she's all, hey, what, what's going on? I just briefly told her, and she's all, oh, it's okay. Let, let, let me pray for you, because God's going to provide for you. And she's all, just watch and see. She had faith, right? It was the, the, the gift of faith. And uh, shortly after, you know, I ended up being uh, off campus, the same lady that came up to me, there was like five other people, and we had, you know, the Lord provided, the Lord watched over, and, and that's what the Lord wanted me for that time, but it was so specific, it was so, this is where I want you, and in my brain, I was not going to wait a year or a semester, it was like, I'm out of here, <laughs> like, I'm there, I don't care if I'm not eating, or I don't have money, uh, the Lord will provide, and it's just a walk of faith, right, and it, it's a blessing, so... I'm not too sure why I told you that, but uh, it kind of fit in my head at the time. So there you go. Um, let's finish this last part, guys. Uh, it's the second event, God's covenant with creation. 
Uh, and this is just two verses here. And there's really two things here. Number one is the offering to the Lord. The offering to the Lord. Look at verse 20. It says that Noah built an altar to the Lord, took of every clean animal and of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. So I find it interesting that Noah built an altar. It was no doubt uh, an altar of praise, an altar of thanksgiving, an altar of uh, just rejoicing in the Lord, right? Um, and, and what did he do? He just delivered him from this flood. All the people that Noah has ever known and seen, millions and millions of people dead. Millions of animals dead. And yet God delivered him. How would you feel? Just I would be rejoicing, and that's what I assume here. But his very first act was a spiritual act, if you will. It's a good day to start your day, by the way, spiritually, just to consider this was a new beginning. He had just heard from the Lord. He was obedient. He jumped out of there with the animals. But he immediately he offers to the Lord a sacrifice to the Lord. And, and I think it's... I think it's good for us to get in the Word, to pray, but also take communion. If you could do your own communion time with the Lord, do it. Remember what the Lord did for you and I, and that starts your day off great. When times get tough during your day, it's not about you, and it's a, it's a breeze. It's easier to get through the day. Um, but the offering was of uh, clean birds, right? Uh, clean animals. And how did Noah know what was a clean animal? How did he know what was a... Uh, unclean animal. If you guys remember in uh, chapter 7, verse 2, um, it says, You shall take with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and his female, two each of animals that are unclean, a male and his female. So he knew the clean animals. Those are the ones that he offered to the Lord. And if you think about it, he didn't offer the unclean animals. God didn't tell him to sacrifice animals on the altar. This is something he gave from his own heart to the Lord. And when we give to the Lord, we ought to be giving heartily unto the Lord, right? With a heart of thanksgiving, a heart of joy unto the Lord. And really, because it's a heart motive, right? Um, you know, think about it. When you, Whatever it is you're giving to the Lord, some of us, it's just praise to the Lord. Some of it's... It's just like, Lord, I just want to sit at your feet like Mary I, I, and learn from you. Some of us, it may be material things uh, and helping somebody. It might be whatever it is to the Lord. But is it important to you? What does that mean to you? When you give it to the Lord, is it the best or is it the least? Is it like, oh, I just wanted to get rid of it. I mean, that thing is so ugly. <laughs> I'm going to bless you, brother. Um, or is it, you know, I went and bought this for you, you know, and it means a lot to me because I've worked, you know, 14 days for that, right? <laughs> Whatever it might be. Uh, but God desires the best offering from our hearts. Uh, and I think Noah is a great example of that, which is really neat. So he offered them as a burnt offering, verse 20. And by the way, Leviticus chapter uh, 1 uh, it will be an offering for sin. So this what is nowhere near any of those offerings. Uh, but this, this here could be an offering of praise, an offering of thanksgiving, a free will offering, basically, to the Lord. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You guys want to know what God's will is for you? Well, here it is, straightforward. There it is. God's will is that you be, uh, in everything, give thanks to Him, right? And it's by grace that we can even give thanks, right, by His grace. So if you're a child of God, no matter what is going on around us, just keep in mind God is either allowing it to happen or it's either being uh, really uh, being caused by the Lord. So either, either way, it's coming through God and everything He gives us. Keep in mind all the gifts that God gives all that God does is always good. It's never evil. It's never to tear down, tear apart, destroy. Uh, it's always good. Uh, so keep that in mind. Let's end with this last verse here. The promise of the Lord, verses 21 and 22. It says, And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. This is a... a, a, a this is because Noah started sacrificing to the Lord without God even telling him to do this. Until he smelled, then he gave us this promise. And so although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing 
as I have done. While the earth remains, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. So God promised he will never again destroy this earth again the same way he did with the water, the flood. Uh, we know in the future what's going to happen. Uh, God is going to melt the elements together, right? He's going to burn this world with fire. It's all going to just, it's all going to burn, <laughs> literally. Um, and, and in the end, you, we know the rapture, the church, time of tribulation, this is a millennial time. Uh, and in the end, everything's wrapped up, but there's a, everything new is going to happen. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, and, and we'll always be with the Lord. And so I pray you guys are encouraged um, that we rest and, and just wait on the Lord. No matter what comes our way, um, just know that the Lord's with you. If you know the Lord, if you're walking with the Lord, you're abiding with the Lord, He's yours. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, so may we uh, just go tonight and just in, in, the, in the heart of just, Lord, here I am. Right? The best offer you can give the Lord is you. <laughs> Right? If, there, if we did have offering plates, you put it down on the ground, you stand up on that thing, and you you give yourself to the Lord, right? As that sweet smelling aroma, in, in a sense. Um, but let's, let's stand up, guys. Let's pray. I pray you guys are encouraged uh, in the Lord. Um, Lord, thank you so much uh, for this time that we could gather together. Uh, and thank you, Lord, that we even have a place to gather and that we have heat as well. I know that there's a lot uh, of people in Texas, millions of people, Lord, without uh, power at this time. And our uh, hearts go out, Lord. I pray you would be with those uh, that are in need at this moment and comfort their hearts, Lord. Uh, I pray, Lord, if there's anybody here, uh, Lord, that they're going through a trial, they're going through the, the storms of life that happen. Uh, Lord, we can't stop them, uh, but we can go through them, and that's only through your grace, Lord. It's only through you giving us the strength to get through it. And I pray that our eyes would be focused on you, uh, that no matter what comes our way, Lord, that we would never leave you, that we would never forsake you, that we would be faithful uh, as Noah was faithful, Lord. He was, he was accounted uh, a faithful and, and righteous uh, before you because he just looked to you. Uh, help us to be obedient, Lord, not only in the the big things, but even the small things, Lord. Uh, be in our hearts, Lord. Continue to direct us and guide us and lead us. Convict us uh, of the things that are going on in our hearts that we might not be held down uh, and, and uh, pushing away your grace, Lord. And so be with us, Father. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.